So before moving on to quantum mechanics, I just want to tie up a loose end that, that we left in the previous video where we, we, um, where we found a solution to the wave equation that satisfied our boundary conditions. And, and, and what was that? Well, if you remember, we, we just kind of forgot about V and we didn't really worry about what that was. We just worried about whether the equation was satisfied. Right, and then and then since I since I solved in the case that t equals zero, uh, we 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 forgot about omega too, and we didn't get any information about omega. For k, we did we did talk about k a little bit. We talked about what it what values it had to take in that in that context, but we didn't really talk about exactly what it is. So so in this video, I want to address the relationship between between v, k, and omega, and so, so I'll 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 use this. This this is one possible solution to this wave equation. It's only one of the possible solutions, but I I I'm just going to use this one to 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 give a concrete example of how this how this plays out, and and the result the resulting relationship will be the same. So so let's get to it. So I take the second derivative with respect to x and the second derivative with respect to t of this function. And, and so you don't get bored watching me write this function over and over. I'm going to, to copy and paste it. So here's my function again. And then I need to, to complete this, I need to put my v squared out in front. So when I take the derivative of this function with respect to x, I'll, I'll get the function back, and then when I use the chain rule, I'll, I'll get the derivative of what's up here in the exponent. And, and with respect to x, that's, that's i times k, right? So, so taking the two derivatives of this function, and I'll, I'll rewrite my v squared. So after I take two derivatives of this function, I'll write this, in, this part in, in this pinkish purple color, i times k. And since I'm taking two derivatives, I'll actually get two factors of i times k. So I'll square i times k. And then, once again, I'll get, get my function back. And so, and then once I take the two derivatives with respect to t, be a similar situation, except I'll get the factor of i times omega. And again, I'll get that factor twice, so I will square it, and then, and then add this function here again. And I, I chose to include these i's since, since, especially when I first started seeing i's in the exponents, I, you know, I found it pretty confusing, so I just wanted to, to use this example of a possible solution to, to help us be comfortable with this i being in the exponent. And, and just know that all it means when an i is in an exponent is that, that it's an oscillatory function, or that it, it can be expressed in, in, in terms of sine and cosine. So, so enough about that. That's not what this video is about. But, so now that we have this function, We've taken the derivatives, so now we can just divide both sides by this function. This is the same function in green here. So, so we can divide both sides by it and it goes away. And then if we, if we square i, we get negative 1, right? Because that's, that's the definition of i, is negative 1. So we have negative v squared k squared equals omega squared, or, or sorry, negative, negative omega squared. So if we divide both sides, or multiply both sides by negative 1, either, either of those, and then we divide, divide both sides by k. So we cancel out these, cancel out these negatives, and we divide both sides by k squared. We get v squared equals omega squared over k squared. 
and then and then if we and if we take the square root of both sides we get v equals omega over k and, and we'll put this in a box because this is this is the relationship between v omega and k and, and I want to go a little bit further and talk about what omega and k are in terms of other other things that you might be more familiar with and to help me with that I've drawn this 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 representation of a sine function and so so as I've mentioned before this these imaginary exponents can be expressed as sines and cosines so if we write down sine of x or or actually let's let's pick Let's pick the again. Let's pick t equals zero. So we're going to say sine of kx. And so, so we know that sine has this this characteristic that it 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 repeats itself. And the time it takes it for it to repeat itself to go to be going up and go up and and then come back down, go below and come back to its starting point. And while still moving up is 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 two pi when when the thing inside the pi or the thing inside the sine is two pi the, that means that it's it's back at its starting point. And when we when we talk about a wave traveling through space, the distance that it takes that wave to repeat is is known as the wavelength. And we use this Greek letter lambda right here to to label or to 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 refer to the wavelength of that wave, the time or the or the amount of space it takes that wave to repeat itself. So if if the wave has repeated itself, we know that k times lambda, which is the wavelength, so when x equals the wavelength, it has to that has to equal two pi because because that's that's the definition of or that's that's when sine repeats itself. So, so then we divide both sides by lambda, and we get k equals two pi over lambda. And so, so this relationship between the wavelength and and k, k's name is the wave number. Wave number. K is the wave number. And, and this is just, these are two different ways of, of talking about the same thing, about how, how this, how a wave looks in space. And, and, and you can use, sometimes it's useful to use either one, but, but it's important to realize that these two really are the same concept, the, the K and the, and the lambda, and this is how they're related. And then we can do something similar for, for, for say we pick that, Let's say we're, we have a sine function and we pick that x equals zero. So we're only talking about a sine function in t. And this this isn't subject to our our earlier uh, boundary conditions. This is just the general solution to the wave equation. And just to clarify, when I say wave equation, I mean that differential equation. That's 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 at the top of this this video here. This this equation here. Just satisfying this equation, so so sine omega t. So waves not only repeat in space, but they also repeat in time. So so this interval here can also be thought of as the period of time that it takes for the wave to repeat itself. And so this is t. T is the period, the amount of time it takes for the wave to repeat itself. And so just like we did up here, we can use, we can say that omega times the time it takes for the wave to repeat itself has to equal 2 pi, right? And so, and so then we can say that omega equals 2 pi over t. And t is, t is the period. I guess another way that people like to talk about the uh, the time it takes for a wave to repeat itself. Instead of saying it takes a certain amount of time for one repetition, they like to talk about the frequency. 
and that's the amount of repetitions per unit time. And so, so these, the frequency and the period are really the same, same notion, but sometimes you like to talk about frequency. It's, it's all a matter of choice, but oftentimes people use frequency. So, so omega equals 2 pi times the frequency. And this, this omega, or, or I'll, I'll, I'll label it here, this omega is called the angular frequency angular frequency angular and it's called the angular frequency because it it's you know it's directly related to the the normal notion of frequency but just multiply this factor 2 pi and that's so that it it fits better in a sine function so so it's same units the same same thing, it's just multiplied by 2 pi. So if we go up top, go back to this part where, where v equals omega over k, we can also say that v equals f times lambda. The, the 2 pi, is, so it would be 2 pi f, and then over 1 over k is lambda over 2 pi, but the 2 pi's cancel and we get this this equation right here and if and if you've taken taken a physics class and they've talked about waves this is probably what they told you right away this is this is what waves do and the things we do with waves just use this equation and and it will lead you it will not lead you astray and that's and so now we've we've actually found this based on just just coming from from the wave equation so it's all built into this wave equation right here. Anything you could want to know about a wave, you can you can get out of this wave equation, which is, you know, this is this is a powerful equation right here, and and, and we'll see more examples of equations like these. V equals f lambda. Hooray! Well, anyway, see you in the next video.